Welcome to Moraga in the first round of the NIT in the Bay Area tonight. The top seed in this bracket, the St. Mary's Gales. Finished second in the West Coast Conference to Gonzaga, hosting the Southeastern Louisiana Lions, who were the champions of the Southland Conference here tonight at McEwen Pavilion. A look at the bracket, and the winner of this game will play the winner of Washington and Boise State, which is tomorrow night in Seattle. Washington hosting that game, even though they're the lower seed, because Boise State is hosting the NCAA tournament. Therefore, the Huskies host tomorrow night. So the winner of our game gets the winner of Boise State and Washington, along with former Arizona standout, Corey Williams, Roxy Bernstein with you. And for St. Mary's and disappointment on Selection Sunday, they're 28-5. They got left out of the NCAA tournament, the top seed in this bracket. But Corey, what's their mindset coming into tonight, again getting stung by the NCAA committee? Well, if they're anything like Randy Bennett coach teams that I know, their mindset's going to be give out and prove a point. This is a team that's a winning team. They're tough. It's the postseason. A couple hundred teams got sent back and had to hang up their gym shoes last week. Any chance they've got, they want to make sure they end up in New York City. And for St. Mary's, they have one of the best players in college basketball, the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Jock Landale. One of the most underrated big men in the country. When you look at his numbers, sensational. Double, double, 20 points and 10 boards a game. He's the centerpiece of that Gales offensive attack. So the big size advantage for St. Mary's. Some quickness, though, for Southeastern Louisiana as Marlon Vila, dynamic point guard, leads the way. This guy right here is special. I love the fact that he led the conference in assists and steals. He giveth and he taketh away. So Marlon Beal, who was the defensive player of the year in the Southland Conference, and some experimental rules for the NIT. We'll start with the key, which is being widened out to 16 feet. Also experimental for the NIT is a longer three-point line pushed out to past 22 feet. We're playing four 10-minute quarters, and then the bonus comes the fifth foul of each quarter, and there is no one-and-one, -one, it's just a double bonus. And after an offensive rebound, the shot clock will go up to 20 and not 30. It's going to make for some increased game play, and obviously the lane changing in the three-point line will space it out, which favors a point guard like Emmett Nahr. The top seed, St. Mary's in the eighth seed, Southeastern Louisiana, who shared the regular season championship in the Southland Conference with Nichols. But Southeastern Louisiana got the edge as they beat Nichols twice in the regular season, therefore with the top seed at the Southland Tournament, although that was won by Stephen F. Austin, as Moses Greenwood hits the baseline jumper, and it's the Lions on the board first. Greenwood has no chance of backing down Jock Landale, so what he's got to do is hit that step up, face up jump shot. Here is Jock Landale, and Greenwood flops, and Landale ties the game. St. Mary's obviously going right to the big man to start the game. It's a huge advantage in the post. Wondering how long before the force to double team that. Significant size advantage for Landale and St. Mary's. Eddie Polanco inside. The kick out. Keith Charleston from deep. And it trickles out of bounds and it belongs to the Gales as Randy Bennett, a three time West Coast Conference Coach of the Year, the all time wins leader in St. Mary's history. Has his St. Mary's ball club in the postseason for the 11th straight year. Five NCAA tournaments, six NIT appearances now, appearing in the 2018 NIT. Again to Landale. Jordan Ford has been playing very well lately for the game. Landale up and under, has it stripped out of bounds, and by early appearances, Corey, it, it appears the Lions are going to get a steady dose of Jock Landale tonight. They most certainly are. They're going to force the Lions into some type of rotation. This is not the first time Jock Landale's seen a trap or a double team, so how they play out of his passing is important. Calvin Hermanson off the inbound. Southeastern Louisiana, 22 and 11. As a foul on the perimeter, it's on Tanner Krebs of St. Mary's. As Jay Ladner has some experience in the NIT, as this is just the second postseason berth as a Division I program for Southeastern Louisiana. But Ladner, as a player, in 1987 won the NIT when he played for Southern Miss. 
He also won a junior college national championship before moving up to the Division I ranks and now in his fourth year at Southeastern Louisiana, which is located in Hammond, Louisiana, about an hour from New Orleans. Also about 45 minutes to an hour away from Baton Rouge. Josh Landale goes middle. And the rebound controlled by Moses Greenwood for the Lions. And a steal for Tanner Krebs. He'll hold it up one on two. Jordan Ford, trail three. Ford that, has been on a roll as of late. And that's what St. Mary's known for, that solid defense, creating the turnover, the transition buckets. They get up and down the court with the best of them. Last four plus games, Ford is now 12 for 21 from three in the last four games, averaging over 19 points per game. On the season, Ford averages 10 and a half. The scoop by Eddie Polanco for the Lions. That's a nice one-on-one -on -one play right there. Polanco with the spin. And Landale can't handle the pass, and St. Mary's with a turnover. Getting that ball up in transition, run right to the line, toe it up. That's three on two, that's a layup drill for the Gales. But right here, look at this one-on-one -on -one effort. Nobody's open, I'll take it myself. Crossover, spin, move, finger roll. Great finish right there. Southeastern going right at the Gales. Here's Greenwood again. And the kick out as he got Landale in the air and the three is missed by Eddie Polanco. And Landale, who led the West Coast Conference in scoring, rebounding, and field goal percentage pulls the board down. Boy, Greenwood had the layup as he just turned to look up at the rim. Emmett Nahr for the deep three line. And skying for the rebound is Marlon Field for the Lions. Joshua Fillmore the floater. And Tanner Krebs the rebound for St. Mary's. St. Mary's who lost in the WCC semifinals. They've been off since last Monday when they lost to BYU. Landale knocked away by Greenwood. 11 to shoot for St. Mary's. So the Gales lost the WCC semis. And for Southeastern Louisiana, they lost in the Southland Conference Championship game Saturday night in Katy, Texas. As Landale to miss. And a heartbreak for Southeastern Louisiana as the scoop missed by Eddie Polanco. Here comes St. Mary's. And Southeastern Louisiana was in control of that championship game. They had a 22-2 run led by as many as 14 over Stephen F. Austin. Landale fouled and won. First on Moses Greenwood. Well, the fourth time is a charm. They go back into Landale. No help right over the left shoulder. There you see the hack. The easy bucket for Landale. 76% foul shooter for Jock Landale. Seventh in St. Mary's history in scoring, fifth in rebounding. An early sub for Southeastern Louisiana is Jordan Capps. Second team all Southland Conference checks in off the bench. He averages 13 points per game. Coming off the bench. St. Mary's up six. You know, actually go back to what you were talking about earlier. Both of these teams ended up here with some rather disappointing losses. Both in situations lost games that they probably felt like they should have won. They've got to shake that off and compete tonight. Emmett Nahr. Calvin Hermanson, corner three. Rattles it. Hermanson second in St. Mary's history in three-pointers. That's his 243rd. And a good start for the Gales. If there's any questions, would they be focused and want to play? Being left out of the NCAA tournament, I think they've been answered in the first five minutes of this game. You don't know anything about your club until that first five minutes. After the tremendous letdown, see the energy they've come back with. Tanner Krebs the rebound. The question for Southeastern is can they make these one-on-one -on -one baskets? They've had good looks, they just haven't knocked them down. And they yeah. missed their last four. And they got to be careful because the Gales put up points in a hurry. Jock Landale. To the baseline, and Landale has seven. 
There you see the experience and maturity of Landale turning away from the double team, going baseline. And there's nobody up there with him when he shoots that jump hook. And a three rattles out from Joshua Fillmore, a very good three-point shooter for the Lions who are struggling to get going offensively. Jordan Ford left it short, and here comes the line. First NIT appearance in school history for Southeastern Louisiana. And it's a 15 6 lead for the Gales. It's been a turbulent few weeks for Southeastern Louisiana. We'll tell you about it next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by eSurance, auto and home insurance for the modern world, Mountain Dew Ice, and Volkswagen. Hurry into the Volkswagen Smile It's Spring sales event. First round of the NIT in Moraga in the top seed St. Mary's out to a 15-6 lead in the Southland Conference champs. The Southeastern Louisiana Lions along with Corey Williams, Roxy Burnson with you. And it's been a tough couple of weeks for Southeastern Louisiana dealing with some off the floor issues. And when you look at what they have been through, Southeastern Louisiana still was able to get the top seed in the Southland Tournament. Incredible that they've been able to keep their composure, missing key players with off the court situations. This is a time of the year where everybody's in a rhythm and to have guys be missing out of the lineup and having other guys have to step in and fill. That's one of those situations that no coach looks forward to, but they've handled it very well. So the news is the Lions are without their starter, James Currington, the senior, who did not travel with the team here in the Bay Area as he recovers from shoulder surgery. Currington was wounded on February 23rd, altercation on campus with two non-students who were arrested and faced multiple charges, including attempted murder, as Currington was shot in the shoulder, and that's what he had needed surgery for. As it stays with St. Mary's, also starter Jabbar Singleton for Southeastern Louisiana was arrested in connection with the incident and charged with illegal discharge and possession of a firearm on school property is indefinitely suspended pending the outcome of the investigation. Earlier, you and I had a chance to talk to Jay Leidner, head coach, and first off, he said there's a lot of misconception and discrepancies with the story that's out there, as it was, again, two who were non-students with Southeastern Louisiana were the ones who were charged in this. Now, Singleton has since been released, although he is suspended indefinitely, and again, he had nothing to do as the story goes, and it's been reported, with his teammate, James Currington, getting shot. Yeah, it's always a difficult situation as the facts continue to come out, an ongoing investigation. But when you have these young people, there's guns involved. It's never a, a good situation. And right now, it's just a difficult time for the whole team to have to travel and try to fill in for two guys who contributed offensively, defensively, leaders on the team. Very unfortunate situation. Jack Landale clears the miss. Nine-point lead for St. Mary's is Evan Fitzner missing a three. And it goes to Southeastern Louisiana to bounce. The first four of the NCAA Division I. Men's Basketball Championship continues tomorrow on True TV beginning at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. For matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. First NIT appearance for Southeastern Louisiana and the second most wins they've posted since they've become a Division I team back in 1980-81. Emmett Nard, the rebound. And right now the issue for Southeastern is just simply field goal percentage. What about three for 16 right now? Still only down nine, but they got to pick that up. Landale off the feed from Evan Fitzner. That's the reason made buckets are so important. Jock Landale shooting that high percentage. He won't take a shot outside the paint all night because he won't have to. Only previous postseason appearance for Southeastern Louisiana. You have to go back to 2004, 2005 when they went 24 and 9, went to the NCAA tournament, lost in the first round to Oklahoma State. 
And that was a team coached by Southeastern Louisiana alum and current Texas A&M coach, Billy Kennedy. That's your guy, right? That's my guy, <laughs> BK. A steal for Jordan Ford. Nice drop off and Landale the flush. John Landale has 11 to St. Mary's lead is 13. No surprises here. The Gales going to the big man in the middle. Jock Landale doing some damage early as the Gales are up. Tonight after the NIT matchup between Hampton and Notre Dame on ESPN, join Kenny Main and John Anderson for Sports Center. Lewis Riddick and Adam Schefter will be in studio to break down the biggest moves of the day in the NFL free agent frenzy today. Russell Westbrook goes for triple-double history and a complete breakdown of the first two games of the NCAA tournament. Sports Center, 11 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN app. St. Mary's has limited southeastern Louisiana just 3 of 13 from the field, and the Lions are 0-5 from 3. St. Mary's efficient shooting close to 60%. And if you followed the Gales at all this year, you know they're one of the most efficient teams in college basketball as they lead the country in field goal percentage coming in as Marlon Veal gets his first points for southeastern Louisiana. And that's precisely why you have to match St. Mary's play for play. They're so efficient. You get down to them, they don't ever beat themselves. They keep working their system, working their offense. Calvin Hermanson. Rattles out the three and the rebound controlled by Marlon Veal and he pushes for the Lions. Southeastern Louisiana can just about play for the final shot of the quarter. Again, four quarters here in the NIT. Brandon Gonzalez the kick. This is D'Angelo West. Four to shoot. Marlon Veal, long three. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter, this NIT matchup in the Bay Area. And St. Mary's out to a good start as the Gales leading by as many as 13 in the first quarter, up 11 of Southeastern Louisiana. Jock Landale, 11 points lead all scorers. And he's powering St. Mary's in front of the AC, Southeastern Louisiana. Well, Jock Landale asserting himself here, Corey, and it's been a point of emphasis for St. Mary's to get him the ball. Well, it's all about real estate and position, and the big fella eating up lots of real estate in the paint. They're getting him the ball on the block. He gets it that deep. It's lights out. There you see the nice jump hook. They're not even coming with the double team, leaving him alone one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to get high percentage shots like this, and he's got the Gales out front early. Leading by as many as 13 in the first quarter, and St. Mary's an 11 point lead as we start the second as Cullen Neal in the game, the grad transfer from Ole Miss, began his college career in New Mexico, the son of former Georgia Tech standout NBA guard and New Mexico head coach Craig Neal. Jock Landale to miss inside, loose ball, wrestling for it. Tanner Krebs comes away with it. Landale. Has it knocked away, and the double team help. Joshua Fillmore comes away with it for Southeastern Louisiana. Rule number one, don't bring the ball down, big fella. Right there, Southeastern, right there on the ball. The shorthanded Southeastern Louisiana without two key players. Yet 22 and 11. As a three on the way, and it's good from D'Angelo West. You know he's a shooter, not missed his first one, but right there, good look as the shot clock was winding down. See if the Lions can start to get on track here. Only an eight-point game. First three for Southeastern Louisiana's Calvin Hermanson answers for St. Mary's. Second three for Hermanson. And that's an offensive foul, legal screen. 
And it's called on Joshua Fillmore. And should this have been a four-point play? Well, right there, there's a little contact as he came back to the floor. I've seen that whistle in other college games before. Got to give the guy room to come down. Right there, maybe a missed call. The foul was on Fillmore, his first. Again, the fouls reset each quarter here in the NIT. Five to shoot. Hermanson launches again. Three more from Calvin Hermanson. Boy, he is such a great shooter. He's been knocking down threes in that uniform for years here at St. Mary's. What a pure shooter. Inside-out game right there. Good balance by the Gales. Second team All-West Coast Conference. Hermanson is the Gales 4 of 8 from deep. Largest lead for St. Mary's. Battles out. Landale the rebound. Well, that's been the story of the night for the Lions. A lot of shots going in and out. The last 48 hours have been a whirlwind for Southeastern Louisiana. They find out late Sunday evening they're coming here to the Bay Area to play St. Mary's. And to travel here from Hammond, Louisiana, all the way to the Bay Area. As they did get to charter here, which Jay Leidner said was pretty cool. As they flew from Baton Rouge to Oakland, got out here, practiced here in the Cuban Pavilion late last night. And had shoot run in here again today, but not much time to prepare and scout and get ready for St. Mary's. No, you're talking about mental toughness. Just missing a tournament bid and then finding out who you play and then having to travel. Right now, you're talking about was this three seconds in the lane? If they're counting by the new marker and the new strip, he was technically in the lane when he caught the ball. Right now, the discussion with the official about are we call the new lane or not. So again, we're playing with experimental rules and the lane that he's talking to Mike Greenstein about has been pushed out as you can see the white tape, essentially. It's a 16 foot wide lane like the NBA. And then you also have the white three point line which is pushed out to 22 feet. Largest lead for the Gales. Inside, rattles out a point blank chance for Jordan Capps that wouldn't go. It's been that kind of a ball game so far for the Lions. It just seems like they got to shake that plane right off. They're getting great looks. You can tell they're a talented team, but right now their field goal percentage, percentage is miserable. Five to shoot for Jordan Ford. Step back three. And it's falling tonight for the Gales. Second three for Ford. 11 straight for St. Mary's. And it seems they've taken their anger out of the NCAA selection committee at Southeastern Louisiana. Well, you knew they are going to come out fired up. I mean, uh, uh, don't get me started on the snub. They're definitely a tournament team, and I think this is a team that's a great chance of ending up in New no, York. No, I'm going to get you started. Did they get snubbed? <laughs> Absolutely. It's completely, you know, the wins are there. They're a good team. Nationally ranked, and somehow they don't make the tournament. That's ridiculous. Second foul on Moses Greenwood. As St. Mary's ranked 25th in the country yet, they're in the NIT, but a hot start. Right here, a little one-on-one -on -one dipsy do downtown. The Gales are up big. It's up big here in this NIT matchup. Here's the Gales' resume. And again, they're one of the first four left out by virtue of being seated as a one in the NIT. And the quad three and quad four record 24 wins for St. Mary's coming from quad three, quad four. And of course, their best win was they run one on the road at the kennel against Gonzaga. But for St. Mary's, this is a team that they feel they got shortchanged, they got left out. And you were bringing it up, Corey, and the strength of schedule, down close to 200. I could see the strength of schedule being an issue, but let's be honest, how much of that is in their control? Once they get out of non-conference, they're in a conference where there's not a lot of strong teams to be had. 
Well, the, also the problem for St. Mary's is they thought they scheduled pretty aggressively in terms of taking on a Dayton team that historically is pretty good. They weren't good this year. Scheduling a Cal team on the road who normally is pretty good. They were not good this year. Now, they didn't do themselves any favors with the way they struggled at the Wooden Legacy down in Anaheim, losing to Washington State and losing in overtime to Georgia. That's a very good point, but I still, you know, you see 28 and 5 come across your screen, a respected program, a winning program. And when you look at some of the nods, some of the teams that did slide in, that's a real head scratcher for me. And I know there are some reports out there that Randy Bennett and St. Mary's turned down potential home and home series with some schools that made the NCAA tournament. And I asked Randy Bennett at that point blank today at shoot around as Calvin Hermanson buries another three. And Randy Bennett flat out said that's simply not true. That potential series against Rhode Island and Creighton, he turned down. That is not the case, Randy Bennett said, emphatically said that is not true. I've always been a proponent of, you know, you make your own luck and you go out and you try to win the games you need to win. And yeah, the strength of schedule might not have been an issue, but the Gales certainly went out, put together the wins, had a successful season by any other measure of a basketball season. But to come up short and not get in the tournament, I just don't get that one. Landale fouled. That's the third on Moses Greenwood. Catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Championship on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Randy Bennett and St. Mary's, they're used to, unfortunately, being in this situation. Corey, as this has happened to them, you go back two years ago, yep. when St. Mary's was left out of the field. So they have had, unfortunately, some experience in dealing with being snubbed on Selection Sunday. And the thing that I am most impressed by is, you know, his attitude, the, the attitude of the kids. They go out, they play hard. They don't focus on these types of things. And you're never going to hear Randy Bennett complain about a lot of these things. Just a great guy, classy guy, takes it on the chin, but has built a great program. You know, we were talking earlier today about the contract extension, made a home here. and really Ten, more Ten more years. Ten more years. That's a long time. He's done a great job here. St. Mary's. Jordan caps with the bucket for Southeastern Louisiana. Again to Jock Landale. Deflected last touch by Tanner Krebs. It belongs to the Lions. But for St. Mary's, Hermanson and Landale have combined for 30 of their 36 points. And the other six belong to Jordan Ford. He's just out there as an afterthought right now. Calvin Hermanson is having a monster game. Knocked down four three-pointers, I believe. And a foul on the drive committed by St. Mary's. And it's against Jordan Ford of the Gales. His first. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to see St. Mary's in the tournament. Because Jock Landale is such a force, and he's surrounded by excellent shooters. That's a problem for any seed in the NCAA tournament. That's a tough matchup when you've got a legit big and guys that can really knock you down. Here come the Gales again. Jordan Ford darting in. And right now the Lions are just having difficulty getting something going. Each player trying to penetrate and create something one-on-one. -on -one. They're getting deep into the possession and not having good looks. And there you see turnovers. Guys trying to go one-on-two. First, rather second bucket for Eddie Polanco. And the senior getting the start tonight again with Southeastern Louisiana minus two key players. Without James Currington and Jabbar Singleton. Out of the double team. Tanner Krebs spots up in the corner. And Landale grabs the rebound, and there's a foul, and it's on Jock Landale for a push up. 
And it's the first against the St. Mary's big man. Gales out in the open court, scoring at will, but big here in the first half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Sam Adams. Fill your glass. Moraga, California. St. Mary's College campus and the Gales right now getting the upper hand on southeastern Louisiana. In its first round NIT matchup, the winner of this game will play the winner of the Washington Boise State game in round two, but Calvin Hermanson, nice complimentary piece for the Gales. Well, when you play with a big guy who requires a double team, you got to do your part. You can't just stand around and watch him work. You got to knock down that outside jumper to open up his post game. And right there, you see the ball goes in, comes out, goes right back in. Calvin Hermanson with a monster effort right now in the first half. Boy, he's lining it up and dialing it home. Four of six from three for Hermanson. As St. Mary's six of 11 from downtown. Overall, the Gales shooting 61% as a team, 51.5% on the season, number one in the country. Also, St. Mary's number 11 in the country in three point percentage, better than 40%. In 15th and free throw percentage, St. Mary's one of the most skilled and one of the most efficient teams in college basketball. That's what makes them so dangerous. If you look at what they're getting, they're getting everything they want out of Jock Landale in the paint. And then when it does come back outside, guys are knocking it down. That's a balanced team, balanced attack. Marlon Veal can't get the flip to go. And the rebound, Krebs and St. Mary's. Here's the numbers we talk about with St. Mary's and how efficient they are. Is Jordan Hunter in the game. Hermanson short on that three, tracks down his own miss. And a whistle, and they reset the shot clock too high. That's why they stop play. It's at 26. Instead of resetting it to 30 after the offensive rebound, it should have gone to 20. Sharp crew right there. You ref the entire season one way, but first night out, they're all over it. Mike Greenstein on top of it. Landale getting a breather. Here late in the first half. Jordan Hunter wasn't looking for the pass. Still five to shoot. Hunter backing his way in. And a goaltender on Jordan Capps get the bucket to Jordan Hunter. Well, the Southeastern Lions are doing everything they can to try to defend the paint. They're just undersized. Coming with double teams, coming with rotations, it's just not enough. The Gales are getting a lot of layups here in the first half. And St. Mary's has matched their largest lead, and the first points for a St. Mary's player other than Hermanson, Landale, or Ford. Nice floater in the key by Keith Charleston for the Lions. First points for the junior from Little Rock, Arkansas. You know, things have been going so well, we haven't really heard anything from Emmett Narr, who's been sensational all season right here off the ball screen. He does have three assists. But he's been quiet. Hunter walked. Five turnovers now for St. Mary's and keep in mind they turn it over fewer than ten times per game. And that's remarkable when you think about how many St. Mary's players actually touch the ball in a given possession. They may make 11 or 12 passes. That's a foul on Emmett Nahr of St. Mary's. A lot of times you see with programs, the more guys that get involved, the crazier things tend to be. But with them, more passing, more assists. They really do a great job of ball movement. Marlon Beal is just a junior, has already become the Southeastern Louisiana all-time assist leader. Step back, and a three off the mark from Keith Charleston. And St. Mary's can play for the final shot of the half if they want to. They spread the court, try to get into a little ball screen action, let Emmett Nahr create something for you here. And here's Nahr. Hermanson. 
What a first half for St. Mary's. Calvin Hermanson with five threes, 17 points, and it's the largest lead for the St. Mary's Gales. I don't know if I've seen a better shooting performance in one half in college basketball. Right here, it's a tough shot. Shot clock's winding down. You're already off the moved back international line. Jab step, pull up, nothing but net. Calvin Hermanson, what a performance. Halftime in Moraga, as St. Mary's led by Jock Landale and Calvin Hermanson. The Gales making eight of their last 10 shots to close out the first half, shooting 62% as the Gales lead the Southland Conference champion, Southeastern Louisiana Lions, 43-19 at the half of this first round NIT matchup. Coming up, the halftime report after the break. Yay, Women's Championship presented by Capital One begins Friday at noon Eastern on ESPN2 with the first round. Check local listing for the game in your area. And remember that all the games are streaming live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere at any time. The Women's NCAA Tournament begins this weekend. First round of the NIT here in the Bay Area tonight. And Jock Landale, 17, rather 16 points, four rebounds in the first half. It's a huge lead for St. Mary's as we begin the second half here in Moraga. And this southeastern Louisiana Lions have some catching up to do. Well, the Gales have been great, but some of this is bad Lions. They just have to start to find the hoop, and there you see the turnover to start the half. No coach wants to start a half that way. Jordan Ford, hashtag SC Top 10, that one. Spin, 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 drop it in. That was nice. That was that was beyond nice right there. That is definitely SC top 10 material. Marlon Veal, nice drop off. And the lay in by Moses Greenwood for Southeastern Louisiana. Best possession of the night right there by the Lions. Little penetration, drop off, high percentage shot. Greenwood playing with three fouls. Guarding Jock Landale. Here comes the double team, and Landale turns away from it. That's the vision, the maturity. You love to see players stick around four years and get to that level of skill. Sees the double team. Nice, soft touch. And a foul is on Calvin Hermanson of St. Mary's. One more look at it with the hashtag, by the way. I challenge you to show me a better display of ball handling than the double spin cycle and then the high finger roll off the glass. This is just straight magnificence. Look at that beautiful play off the glass. That's, that was pretty. That's, that's NCAA tournament talent, Roxy. I'm telling you. Joshua Fillmore. Can't get that to go, and Landale another rebound. Jordan Ford all the way to the cup. Jordan Ford has found his rhythm, turning the corner. Taking it all the way to the rack. Poor rotation right there by the Lions. Nobody getting in the way, contesting these layups. No rim protection out there. Shot clock inside 10. Here's Moses Greenwood. Greenwood for the baseline. And it's tipped out of bounds off of St. Mary's. It stays with the Lions. It's just a straight up one on one line. No screen down the lane. Nobody rotates up off the glass. Doesn't get any easier than that. They changed the call. Initially ruled a southeastern Louisiana ball, but they give it to St. Mary's. Jordan Ford really flourishing here at the end of his sophomore year. And he will be the guy that runs the show for Randy Bennett for the next two years with Emmett Nara graduate. Hopefully he learned 
picked up some of that court vision from Emmett Nahr, who made everyone better and continues to do so. Spin, Jock Landale now with 20. But school is in session right now on the block. Jock Landale breaking out all the moves, up and unders, jump hooks. And Jock Landale has just set the St. Mary's single season scoring record. 725 points and counting for the Aussie. And it's just been a rough night for Jay Ladner and his Lions coming out to the West Coast here in their first NIT appearance. Emmett Nahr, his first points of the night. And that's light work right there for the senior. He knows he hasn't had to do a lot, but right there taking his own shot. And we'll see a timeout here by the Lions. Timeout southeastern Louisiana. And it is all St. Mary's in Moraga tonight. Jock Landale, the record setter, single season scoring record for the St. Mary's big man. Well, you know they were going to be counted on to go to him this season, and he's delivered with beautiful moves like this. One for the history books, Jock Landale, a Gales legend. They passed Omar Samhan for the single season record, the former St. Mary's big man. As the Gales an 11-2 run to start the second half. After leading it 43-19 at the break. So Jock Landale, West Coast Conference Player of the Year. And it's amazing to think of because he didn't play much his first two years here at St. Mary's. He started to come on late in his sophomore year in a reserve role. That at the beginning of last year, he has just taken off and elevated his game. Well, you're right. They didn't have him in their plans offensively a lot when he first got here. But I can tell you as a player, when coach comes to you and says, hey, it's going through you this year. You're the big man. You're the anchor of this team. That's one thing. That's a lot of pressure. But then to go out there and to deliver over 33 games the way that he has, that's sensational. Gordon Capps missing a three. Out of bounds to St. Mary's. And again, the St. Mary's team, 28-5. We're left out of the NCAA tournament. The second time in three years that Randy Bennett has felt his program has had a gripe for not getting in. They yeah. made the tournament last year losing in the second round. So you're on the modern Arizona. Yeah. And it wouldn't be so bad if some of the schools that are controversial in the selection, that's the contrast. Their situation is, is separate, but when you look at some of the teams that got in and got the bid, it really has a lot of Gales fans upset, and Randy Bennett as well. Foul on Tanner Krebs of St. Mary's, his second. And these are the winningest teams in college basketball since the start of 2007-2008. The Gales rival Gonzaga, second in win percentage to Kansas. And of course, Mark Few and the Zags made the championship game last year, losing to North Carolina. As Joshua Fillmore fouled on a three, and Cullen Neal claiming I didn't touch him. These will be the first three, first three free throws shot by Southeastern Louisiana tonight. Well, this is the new in vogue move in college basketball. He bumped him. A little bit of contact, but guys all falling after they get the jumper. Doesn't take long for things from the NBA to trickle down to college sports. You see that a lot at the higher level. Three free throws for Fillmore, the senior from Orlando, a 60%. Free throw shooting. Again, the first free throw attempts of the night for Southeastern Louisiana. It's Fillmore 17th in Lions history in scoring. Eighth in assist has made the second most threes. Southeastern Louisiana history. It's a really nice career in Hammond, Louisiana. It's a mystery guy who shoots so well from beyond the arc and he struggles at the line. A little pressure now from the Lions. And a steal. Quentin Thomas to the basket, and he's fouled by Jordan Ford. So the press works and creates a turnover and leads to two free throws for Thomas. Get that trap. There's a lazy cross-court pass. Those were easy to pick off. Lions turning up the heat, but you get a chance to set your press after the made free throws. And they hadn't been to the line until just now. Thomas, who is listed as a senior, transferred from Nichols. He's from Baton Rouge. 
Now, Southeastern Louisiana will try to get another year for Quentin Thomas. He played his first two years at Nichols and transferred. He did sat out last season. So Southeastern Louisiana will appeal to try to get the year back, but there is a little bit of stickiness with the transfer because he transferred within the Southland Conference. We didn't go through senior day ceremonies because Southeastern Louisiana is hoping to get one more season for Quentin Thomas. And here goes Marlon Field right in your living room. And Southeastern going to switch it up with a 1 3 1 trap. Tanner Krebs the miss, Quentin Thomas the rebound. Last three possessions doing pretty solid for Southeastern. Jordan Caps powers his way up and scores inside. He went right at Jock Landon. Again, the press from the Lions. Jordan Ford spots up. Three more. That's just like shooting practice this morning. Right there, Landale draws the double team. Not a Lion defender in sight. Ford knocks down another three. St. Mary's 9 of 17 from three. Quentin Thomas to miss the offensive rebound. Keith Charleston for the Lions. Inside, Caps leans in, gets the roll. And even though the line has been moved out here for the NIT, it doesn't seem to have affected St. Mary's and the way they shoot it from deep. Jock Landale again spins through the double team. Jock Landale, one of those guys that's got great footwork, great hands. His 21st 20 point game of the season. West Coast Conference Player of the Year. Calvin Hermanson rattles out. Jock Landale cleans it up. What a night for Jock Landale, who had struggled a little bit down the stretch for the Gales. Player who attracts a lot of attention. Has a lot of responsibility in terms of scoring for this team, but you're right. His struggles down the stretch were key. But on a night like tonight, you can see if left alone one-on-one, -on -one, he is a force in the paint. Ten now for Jordan Caps. The only Southeastern Louisiana player in double figures. Tanner Krebs missed the lay -in. And the lay-in for Jordan Capps has had a nice second half. And these are the type of plays they needed to make early in the game when it first started. They had one-on-one -on -one opportunities where they were quicker. And there's a nice take by Capps. Eight of his 12 since halftime. Jock Landale off the pass from Tanner Grass. They got to find a way to get Landale out of the paint. And I don't know that they can. At 6'11", 255, he kind of goes where he wants to. Not many teams have had the answer for that this year, Cole. I think you just have to find a way to get him off the floor, even if that's drawing fouls to try to negate his size and his ability. you got to get him in foul trouble or something. Offensive foul on Marlon Veal, but Jordan Capps trying to get something going for the Lions. A little one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes if you're not big, it's good to be quick. Capps to the rack for two. Southeastern Louisiana from Hammond, Louisiana, about an hour from New Orleans. 45 minutes to an hour probably from Baton Rouge. Southland Conference, their first year as a Division I 
basketball program back in 1980-81. And our colleague, formerly a sports center, of course now at Good Morning America, Robert Roberts, class of 1983. You can't do a Southeastern Louisiana game without mentioning Robin Roberts. Definitely, gotta shout that out right there. Going to the rack, Robin Roberts. And Texas A&M coach Billy Kennedy, a proud Southeastern Louisiana alum. He's got his Aggies in the tournament. A team that won the Southland Conference this season with the top seed in the tournament but lost the championship game to Stephen F. Austin. And a whistle off the ball. And that's the fourth on Moses Greenwood with a minute 24 left in the third quarter. Again, we're playing four quarters, the experimental rules here in the NIT. A short-handed Lions team, minus two key players, getting all they can handle from the 25th ranked St. Mary's Gales. The floater from Jordan Ford. So Jordan Ford has really stepped up, showed some nice parts of his game. It looks like the Gales offense will be in good hands for seasons to come. St. Mary's has matched their largest lead. Greenwood goes inside. The kick out, deflected out by Emmett Nahr, 10 to shoot for the Lions. When you got a big guy in the paint eating up all that space and he rolls, defenders tend to stay with him, which opens up the finger roll, and he just, which Ladner's seen enough. Rough night for Jay Ladner and his Lions. The winner will get the winner of Boise State Washington, which is played tomorrow night in Seattle. The lay-in from Eddie Polanco. Well, you can't stress enough how difficult it is to find out who you're playing, try to do prep work in 48 hours. Then they've got the cross-country flight. And deal with the complexity of what St. Mary's throws at you. Yeah. Because they do have a lot of weapons. And the way that Randy Bennett's system, it's so tough to defend if you're not familiar with it. And it was a quick turnaround time, which you alluded to. Yeah, and you know, talking with Coach Ladner, he said the same thing. At, certain, at a certain point, you've got to focus on what you do because you don't have enough time to prep for any team, let alone a team as complex as St. Mary's in just 48 hours. So focus on what you do. Come out and give it your all. Elijah Thomas in for St. Mary's. Evan Fitzner spots up. Corner three. Largest lead of the night for St. Mary's for the end of three in Moraga. And it is all St. Mary's. The Gales have made 10 threes. They're shooting 64% from the floor. Right now, the Gales are in a zone, putting on a show here in Moraga. St. Mary's up big. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. And Sam Adams, fill your glass. In the Bay Area tonight for the first round of the NIT is the top seed St. Mary's, hammering southeastern Louisiana. It is their largest lead of the night. And the winner will play the winner of Boise State Washington in Seattle tomorrow night. It's that game. Other half of the bracket, LSU and Louisiana. And then Utah and UC Davis round out this quadrant. The Randy Bennett's team, they've responded to any questions whatsoever. Boy, will they be motivated? Will they want to play tonight? They've been into this one from the outset. Well, I think the best way you answer what you perceive as an NCAA tournament snub is you end up in New York. And usually the four teams ending up in the finals of the NIT, most people can look at and say, hey, those are better than some teams that got into the national tournament. Elijah Thomas with a three, just his 10th of the season. 11 threes for the Gales. An ice cold off the bench, first shot. Nothing but net. Moses Greenwood stepping out. Rattles out in the rebound, Jordan Ford. Well, the number one field goal shooting team in America, St. Mary's, sizzling tonight. 
Jordan Ford. And the rebound. And St. Mary's gets a new 20 seconds, and then Cullen Neal throws it away. Catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Championship on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Regardless of the outcome tonight, as D'Angelo West with the miss, as the Lions get it back. This has been a terrific season for Southeastern Louisiana. Southland Conference champions, and a foul will put Marlon Veal at the line. And it's on Jock Landon, his second. But the second most wins for the Lions since they joined Division I. Now they tied with Nichols, but they were recognized as the top seed and champions of the Southland Conference because they swept the season series for Nichols. Lost to Stephen F. Austin in the championship game, and Stephen F. Austin will play Texas Tech in the NCAA tournament. It's the second postseason bid at the Division I program. A successful season on all accounts, and this is a team that won nine out of their last ten games up until this evening. So a winning tradition. They've gotten things started. It's going to look like it may come to a, an abrupt end. You wonder if Jock Landale is done for the night as he checks out. One more from Marlon Veal. A Division one record 24 wins for the Lions back when they went to their only NCAA tournament at Division one school 2004 2005 under Billy Kennedy and the win total this year 22 and 11 the second most wins at a Division one program and it appears Jay Lagner who won at junior college national championship now this fourth year is really building this program underneath and the lay in for Jordan Hunter. And of course, you know, to, to remind folks, you take two starters off of any team, you're going to see a little bit of a dip in play, if not a lot. So but give, the, give us good credit for even getting to the championship game in the Southland Conference Tournament. No question about it. Tough. And you know, one of the things you talked about this morning, just want to make sure his kids came out and fought, and they certainly have tonight. The shots didn't go in for them. They had great looks. They did everything they could to create good opportunities. Eddie Polanco, step back three. And Jordan Hunter gets it for the Gales. And there's a foul away from the ball. And it's called against Brandon Gonzalez, the redshirt freshman for Southeastern Louisiana. I know to leave a sour taste in the mouth of the Lions, but this still was a terrific season for Southeastern Louisiana. I agree with you 100%. You win a conference championship, and that's a tremendous accomplishment. A lot of the coaches break the season up into three parts, you know, non-conference, conference, and then the postseason. And they like to do well in all of them, but winning your conference, that's the, that's on the mind of every coach in Division I basketball each year. How are you going to fare in your conference? So, to come out as conference champs and some postseason action in the NIT, you've got to consider that a very successful year. And the win total improving every year under Jay Ladner. This is year four. Jordan Caps from deep. All right, so you felt that St. Mary's was snubbed. What about USC? They're also a one seed in the NIT. Did they get shortchanged? Someone will have to explain to me how the second place team in the Pac-12 does not make the NCAA tournament. Fallon, Jordan Hunter belongs to the Lions, but this night belongs to Jock Landale and St. Mary's. Wednesday night NBA doubleheader starts in Boston with the Celtics hosting Bradley Beal and the Wizards at 8 Eastern. Then out here to Oracle, Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma 
And the Lakers take on KD and the Warriors, who are without Steph for the next four games, at least. Our coverage shifts NBA countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN app. Warriors looking a little mortal without Steph Curry. Being a Warrior fan, which I am. <laughs> Should I be concerned, c -Duck? No, no, you have nothing okay. to be concerned. All right. With. Did I sound nervous? No, you didn't. You didn't you sound you sounded like a concerned fan, but you know, Steph will be back and Warriors still send probably the best starting five out to that jump ball of any team in the NBA. So we were talking about USC as a possible snub before. And keep in mind the Trojans, since the tournament expanded to 68, the highest RPI to ever be left out of the field. I, like I said, second place in the Conference of Champions. Made it all the way to the championship game. Lost to Arizona, no shame in that. And somehow this team, which started out the season ranked inside the top 15, I believe they maybe started with 11 or 12 ranking. Somehow they're left out of the NCAA tournament after the loss of DeAnthony Melton, after the loss of an NBA prospect in Beanie Boltwright. They still managed to finish second in the league. And we're supposed to believe that they take those types of things into consideration, how well they played. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Last bucket from Keith Charleston for the Lions. Shot clock rolling down for Cullen Neal. Evan Fitzner rattles in a corner three. 12 threes for the Gales tonight. Well, this new NIT court is definitely benefiting the Gales. They're towing that line and taking advantage of that extra space. Penetrate and kick, making it easy. Keith Charleston, the step back three. And rebound out of bounds, and it stays with Southeastern Louisiana. Now they've changed the call, they're giving it to St. Mary's. First appearance for Jock Perry, the redshirt freshman. Another Aussie, one of six Aussies on this St. Mary's team, and one of two Jocks. <laughs> Jock Landale done for the night, it appears, with 26 points. And now Jock Perry gets a chance, as Jordan Ford has had a dynamic night here for St. Mary's. Here is Jock Perry. Elijah Thomas, the offensive rebound. Now he attacks. Nobody cut him off. Everything going the way of the Gales tonight. Even the second string getting in on the act. It's almost as if St. Mary's is playing the NCAA selection committee at not southeastern <laughs> Louisiana tonight. Well, I think, you know, you play an entire season like all the schools do, and you put so much into it. And one counted for Jordan Caps. Maybe the lone bright spot tonight for southeastern Louisiana. See the second string getting up for the two-hand jam. You talk about St. Mary's playing with a little chip on their shoulder. No question about it. They love nothing more than to show up in New York City and have a chance to win it all. 14 points now for Jordan Caps, the senior from Norcross, Georgia. Played his freshman year at Samford. Second team all Southland Conference performer this year. Cousin of former Cal star and NBA standout right now with the Celtics, Jalen Brown. St. Mary's breaks the press again. You and I did a lot of Cal games together, and you called that Jalen Brown situation. He was a phenomenal player. He was young as a freshman, but hey, he has really blossomed. And you can tell he's going to be a great player in the NBA for a lot of years to come. Moses Greenwood is fouled out here with 403 to go and Greenwood we should get it in terrific bloodlines for Moses Greenwood cousin of David Greenwood former UCLA All-American and his uncle LC Greenwood played for the Steelers in the Steel Curtain defense and played in Super Bowls and won Super Bowls athletics in the DNA in the genes and just not enough right now at six foot seven to have to face off against Jock Landale all night long with no help he put forth a great effort, best he could. Yeah. 
Evan Fitzner. And Katz comes over to block the shot. Thomas with two. Corner three of the shot clock expiring, and there's Caps for the rebound. Big time block by Caps right there. Getting up. Still playing hard. Caps missing the run. St. Mary's has been engaged and ready to play from the outset tonight. As a three rattles in, Cullen Neal. And Neal, one of four 1,000-point scorers on the St. Mary's team. They're one of two teams in college basketball, along with Cincinnati, that have four different 1,000-point scorers. Neal ahead to four. 19 for Jordan Ford. And a steal. Elijah Thomas scoops it in. Starting to see fatigue set in. Guys trying one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be a good place to maybe get a timeout. Have your guys go over some things, and that's exactly what they're going to do. And Jay Leitner will take his final timeout with 2.44 to play. As St. Mary's dominant tonight. 40-minute game, 40 minutes of effort for the Gales. There's no let-up in this squad as they're up big here in Moraga. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Mountain Dew Ice and insurance, auto and home insurance for the modern world. 13 threes for St. Mary's dominant tonight against Southeastern Louisiana. Let's flash back to 2009, second round of the NIT right here. Patty Mills and the St. Mary's Gales against Steph Curry and the Davidson Wildcats. An overflow crowd was here for that second round NIT game. Some big names on the floor going on to be big names in the NBA. And St. Mary's. And Patty Mills got the upper hand of Steph Curry in his final college game right here at McEwen Pavilion. And then he would, of course, come back to the Bay Area. And done a decent job with the Warriors. I could say that. He is. And Patty Mills has his number retired here at St. Mary's along with Matthew Della Vadova, who was the all-time assist leader in Gales history prior to Emmett Nahr, and Thomas Sherry, the three numbers that have been retired in St. Mary's history. Talking about the uh, Australian Basketball Hall of Fame out there in the hallway. <laughs> Jordan Capps was 17 tonight as Cullen Neal missing a three. St. Mary's 13 for 24 from outside the arc as Jock Perry called for the foul. The winner of this game will play the winner of Washington and Boise State, which is going to be played tomorrow night in Seattle. Even though Boise is the four and the Huskies are the five seed because Boise State is hosting the NCAA tournament. They cannot host the NIT. Therefore, the Huskies will get the home game tomorrow night. Joshua Fillmore missing a three. And the hustling for the rebound is Brandon Gonzalez. Fillmore in the drive. Shot clock rolling down. Pull up jumper rattles out from Gonzalez. And it's controlled by St. Mary's. So what do you think of the new rules? Do you like the experimental rules we're playing in here for the NIT? Well, I'm not a fan of resetting the fouls. I think a lot of players, your strategy is to get fouled and get to the line. If you reset that constantly, it kind of gives the advantage to the defense. But in terms of the spacing, I love the new lines. I think players are bigger, stronger, faster, space them out more, make the game. You like the deeper three-point line. I like the deeper three-point line, and I like the bigger lane. Let the big fellas have more room to work. Corner three off the mark from Eddie Polanco. And it rolls in for Jordan Capps, who has 15 since halftime. 19 for the game, and Randy Bennett takes a timeout for a sub as he empties the bench and gets Dan Sheets in the game to walk on. For the local product, the all-academic selection of the WCC, Dan Sheets comes in for St. Mary's here with a minute seven to go. He's got the toughest job in the building. As soon as he gets the ball, this student section wants to see him chuck it up. 
And Should he got, throw it up? Absolutely. You got, and you got to go 100%. I'm not proud of this fact, but Rox, that was me freshman year at Arizona. Coming in at the end of a blowout, you get that first shot, you got to take it and make it. And they're looking to get him the ball. St. Mary's a win tonight will give them 29, which will match a single season school record, which they've accomplished in each of the last two years. And a foul on Jordan Capps will put St. Mary's at the line. Last year, St. Mary's 29 and 5, and a win tonight will get them to 29 and 5. They also won 29 games a couple of years ago when they were in the NIT, losing in the quarterfinals. But Jock Perry at the line. Seven foot one, Melbourne, Australia native. Eighty nine forty five, St. Mary's against the Southland Conference champion, Southeastern Louisiana. Off balance three from Fillmore. Misspoke earlier, mentioned that they led by 14 in the South Lake Conference Championship game. They actually trailed and went on a run to come back from down 14 to take the lead. Yet down the stretch, Stephen F. Austin took control, outscoring Southeastern Louisiana 16-6 to close the game. And that's what's so tough about postseason. Sometimes the game slips away. Here's Dan Sheets. Won't go for him. The crowd was ready to explode. <laughs> and that. And half-court shot off the mark for Marlon Beal and a tough night for Southeastern Louisiana. Their season comes to an end here in the NIT at 22 and 12. But St. Mary's has tied a school record, 29 wins with a 44-point victory over the Southland Conference champion Southeastern Louisiana Lions, 89-45. St. Mary's makes 13 threes. They shoot 59% holding Southeastern Louisiana to 35% shooting. Jock Landale led the way with 26, and he will join us next from Moraga as the Gales are on to round two of the NIT. Well, St. Mary's dominant in advancing in the NIT as they knock off the Southland Conference champion Southeastern Louisiana Lions. 89-45 here in Moraga tonight. Along with Corey Williams, Roxy Bernstein with you, joined by the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Jock Landale, first of all. Congratulations, Jock. And talk about the mindset for your team coming into tonight with the disappointment of being left out of the NCAA tournament on Sunday, then coming in here and trying to keep your season going and playing for a championship in the NIT. I think we all just decided right after it happened that we weren't going to let uh, a bunch of six-year-old men who sit in a room and determine the fate of all these teams, determine how we play and what we're about as a team. And uh, for us tonight, it was just all about coming in and playing hard, playing together and just enjoying the time we have left with the four of us seniors. So uh, I appreciate all, everything that all the, uh, all the young guys did, to us, uh, did for us. And I mean, I said to them, I was like, at the start of the game, I just said to them, I was like, look, if we come out and lose this first game, they might come back and look at this and say, hey, St. Mary's didn't deserve to be in the NCAA tournament, and they probably don't this year if, if we get in the same situation next year. So uh, we've kind of made it our mission just to you know, prove them wrong and prove that uh, we deserve to be in there. And, but we're not dwelling on the past, and uh, yeah. 20 and 10 all season. You had 29 points in 26 minutes of one of those two. Talk to me a little bit about how you've developed and being a leader as a senior. What has that been like for you this season? Uh, it's it's been a, it's been a battle. Uh, it's just, it's something that I've had to work on every every day, and coaches kind of stayed with me on that. And uh, just trying to last year, it was kind of like I was I was I wouldn't say I was like all about myself, but I was kind of focusing on like how I can help this team get better. And this year, it's more how can I help everyone else around me get better and improve as players and improve as leaders and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, it's just more, putting more of a focus on the team rather than just myself and yeah. Speaking of the team, Jack, how proud are you of this group with the performance to come out tonight like this and be dominant from the outset against a team that won their conference? Uh, I'm really proud of my guys. It's it's credit to them. They you know they didn't want to they didn't want to bend over and take yeah. take anything that these guys didn't dish out to us. So uh, we just I'm proud of my guys for fighting and trying to prove that you know we're a lot more than everyone thinks we are and we deserve a lot more respect. 
Are you coming into this tournament with a chip on your shoulder to prove For sure. the doubters wrong that you belong and to win the NIT championship is a way you can do that? For sure, absolutely. Uh, that's Personally, I want to try and make my college career last as, as long as possible. I know that things afterwards are going to pan out how, however they do and uh, but for right now I'm just focused on trying to make this team as, as good as they can be and uh, hopefully finish on a, on a big win streak. Well a tremendous performance tonight. Congratulations. Enjoy the win. Good luck in round two. Thank you. Appreciate it. Jock Thanks, Landale 26 points to lead St. Mary's to the Gales dominant tonight against Southeastern Louisiana as they roll past the Lions 89-45. More to come from Moraga. 89-45, St. Mary's clobbers southeastern Louisiana advance, advancing to the second round of the NIT. It was more than just Jock Landale tonight. Yes, Landale was terrific, and St. Mary's took advantage of their big size advantage inside against southeastern Louisiana. But the guard showed up as well, and Jordan Ford has really emerged here down the stretch. For Randy Benton, St. Mary's, another big game tonight for the sophomore. Well, you can have the great guard play, you can have the great shooters, you can have the great big men, but nothing happens unless the guards are on point. And Jordan Ford was definitely that. You look at him in the open court, head up, putting on a clinic, making a mockery of the Lions defense. But when the ball moves like that and you've got an outside shot, that's a triple threat player. And he really was shining tonight. 19 for Ford, including going three of four from three. How about this line? Five rebounds, four assists, three steals, no turnovers for Jordan Ford. And Calvin Hermanson was quiet in the second half, but at five threes in the first half to help St. Mary's jump out to a huge lead. Yeah, Calvin Hermanson dropped those bombs early and put the game away, honestly, in the first half. He was sensational. 59% shooting from the field. St. Mary's leads the country in field goal percentage. 13 threes tonight for the Gales. All right. St. Mary's has put the hangover, if you will, from getting left out of the NCAA field behind him. Jock Landale made it clear with us just a couple of minutes ago. Now that St. Mary's is back on postseason track, do you get a sense this is the team that could go to New York and win the NIT? When you're a college player, you're tired this time of year. So when someone gives you motivation, they give you a reason to play, that's what you saw tonight with St. Mary's. Guys are looking for a reason to get out there. They have a point to prove. They have a chip on their shoulder. And they want nothing more than end up in New York City. 29 wins now for the Gales, which ties his school record. Third straight year that St. Mary's has won 29 games. They'll have a chance to go for a school record 30 wins. They'll play either Boise State or Washington in the second round right here. And look, they're going to have three home games as we look at the bracket. And St. Mary's, all they got to do is defend the home floor. They lost once all season here. That was to Gonzaga. But if they defend the home floor, they're going to end up at Madison Square Garden. Well, it's real simple. Keep on doing what you're doing. St. Mary's puts up a lot of points. They definitely are comfortable at home. They got multiple players in double figures when they play here. You're right. The path is there for them. A magnificent performance by the St. Mary's Gale tonight, dispatching, dispatching the Southland Conference champion, Southeastern Louisiana Lions. My partner, Corey Williams, and our terrific ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein, saying so long for the Bay Area, where St. Mary's tonight in Moraga, dominant over Southeastern Louisiana, 89-45. Good night from the Bay Area.